Welcome to Blonde Cards and Crafts. Let's make something together. Hello, I'm Simone and welcome to my craft room. Today we're going to be making three cards using the Paper Craft Society box and this is box number 17. I'm going to leave links down in the description so you'll be able to see what comes inside the box. Today my three cards that I'm going to make are this one which is a screen fold card and it's a slim line size card. We're also going to make a dome card and this is a six by six dome card. And we're going to be inspired by the little card that comes in the box. And on the back, it has four inspirational cards that you can make. So I'm going to make one of those and that's this card. So I hope you'll sit back, relax and enjoy my video or maybe craft along with me. And if you do make any of the three cards that I've made today, I'd love for you to tag me on social media so I can see your makes. OK, let's get down to making our cards. For our screen fold card, you will need two white card sheets. One measures eight by eight, the other eight by eight and a quarter and you'll score that one at quarter of an inch. I also have four blue panels and three patterned paper panels. The blue panels that I have here measure three and three quarters by five and a half. And then my patterned paper measures three and a half by five and a quarter. On one of my blue mats, I'm going to put my die cut image out and this is of a dresser. Now I have a piece of white card and I'm going to put that behind as the background for the dresser. The dresser will sit nicely on this piece, giving a, a slim border on the left and right. I've die cut out the little drawer for the bottom and the little handles, as well as the two doors for the cabinet. And I've put the two little handles on that as well. Lovely. So that's going to be our focal image on the front of our card. I have this white card measuring three and a quarter by five. And I've put some of the ephemera of the dishes and cups. There's a strip of patterned paper there at the bottom. And it's just a half inch wide by five inches. I've die cut two white panels out. And they're two and a half by three and a half. I've stamped these using stamps from the box, which you can see here, as well as some from my stash. I have four pattern paper strips and these measure three and three quarters by three quarters of an inch. And these are to embellish the back of the card, but you don't have to use these. As I said, I've die cut out some of the little um, tea set pieces, the uh, clock, which I think is so cute the teapot, some of the cups and the platter and plates. And I've stamped them again using stamps from the set. And I showed there briefly the stamp and die sets that come in the kit. OK, so now I'm going to score our two white card panels. And the first one I'm scoring at four inches and also at eight inches. And that little tab on the right hand side is where we're going to join onto this piece of card and again i'm scoring this at four inches so we'll have four panels each measuring four by eight and then we'll have that little tab to join these two together so i'm just going to fold and burnish my score lines and that's the little tab i was talking about that's going to join on there like that. So we have our 16 inch long card. And I think this card would be really a fabulous card for um, an office. You know, you've got plenty of room on the back for everyone to sign. Or if you have a family and you want to all sign a card for someone and put, you know, little messages on the back. I think this style of card is brilliant because it's so big. And it's also a wow card when it's on a mantelpiece or a shelf. Yeah, I do love it. OK, so I'm just showing you there where the tab will adhere to the other piece and how our card will look. 
To give the impression of feet at the bottom of our screen card, I'm going to use this punch. It's a two and a quarter inch stamping up circle punch. I'm punching through the folded over cardstock, so it's going through two layers. And I'm just making sure that it's centered there and it's a little under halfway up. So once I'm happy with that, I'm going to then punch it out and you can see, and this is 300 GSM card and it's gone through the two. Now I recommend here what you do is you put the two together now. Take a pencil and draw an outline of where you've just punched. Then take your punch over and punch out the second lot. Because I've used 600 or 300 GSM cardstock, it would be hard to go through the four. So that's what I'd recommend you do. And that's what I did for a finish. Perfect, that's great. Okay, so now we want to join our two pieces together. And to do that, I'm going to use some strong um, red liner tape. This one that I have here, it's blue liner tape, but it's the same kind of strength as the red liner tape. And it's the right size that I need for this quarter inch tab. So I'm going to put that on there and I've pressed down fully and then I'll take the re release paper off and add my other piece to it. Now try to bring this up just up to the score line because you want it to be able to fold nicely. I went over the score line a little bit. So with a little bit of finagling, it's working perfectly. So that's the base of our screen fold card. Now what I'm going to do is adhere all my mats and layers together. And then we're going to put them onto our card base. I've made this style of card before about two years ago. Um, I made a screen fold card, but it was a much smaller version and I really enjoyed making it. But it was recently I was watching um, a video by Mixed Up Craft and she was making a screen fold card and she had dyed, die cut two panels and put some acetate on hers. And I, th I just, I loved the look of it, but it, it reminded me of the card that I'd made before. And I thought I'm going to make this again, but I'm going to make it in the larger size. So that's what inspired this card. Okay, so now I'm just making sure that the panels I'm putting down are at the same height so that one won't be higher than another on the card. And then I'm going to adhere this white little panel to the back of my dresser. And I like that the white on the back of the dresser picks up the white in the card base and in the pattern paper. And then I'll stick that down onto my blue matte layer. My little doors and drawer, I have die cut those out three times, twice in white cardstock and then once in the same blue as the dresser. I just felt that this would give a little dimension to the doors and the drawer. And I really like the look of that. You could use um, some foam or you could put some, you know, foam tape behind to give the dimension. But I liked the look of just die cutting out a couple of layers of cardstock. Lovely. And now all we need to do is add in our little delf or, you know, cups and plates, whatever you like to call it. So I die cut out loads of these little pieces using the dies that came in the kit. And then what I did is I stamped over them after I had die cut them out. With a little clock, I added in what looks like numbers and hands using a very fine, um, fine tipped pen from my stash. Once that was done, then I added glossy accents all around the different pieces. I put glossy accents on the teapot, the jug and the cups as well as around the rim of the plate and the center part where our clock face is. So they're all done and ready. As I said, I made extra pieces and I'll put them on my panel that has the happy birthday and that has room on it for our sentiment. I just love the look of these. 
I think there's such a fabulous die set to have in your stash. I love Paper Discovery and I have the Room Builders, the Elegant Room Builders. So I'm delighted to have this as well. Okay, for the top of my card, you could um, die cut out or punch out a border and then stick it along the top. But I decided I was going to use my punch to actually cut out the top of my card base. So, like I said, you don't have to do this. You can just punch out or die cut out a nice border or even a strip of cardstock or whatever you like. Or you could just leave it blank if you wanted. But I love the finish of this. I just think it's, you know, it's cute and it adds something, I think, to the card. What do you think? So I'm nearly at a finish now. I've taken my time, make sure I've lined everything up and then punch everything out. And the X cut punches are really good, strong punches. So I'm just going to round over the end there. I didn't want to have a sharp point at the end. Lovely. I'm delighted with that. OK, so now I'm going to stick down all my panels. My mother-in-law has a beautiful dresser in her kitchen. Her kitchen, um, it, the dresser is very similar to the look of the whole kitchen. But when I saw this dresser, I just thought to myself, this is going to be awesome for a birthday card for my mother-in-law. And her sitting room, she has this beautiful house and it looks right out onto the sea. We live on the west coast in Ireland and I just thought this will go with the colours that she has in her sitting room and with the dresser and everything. I just know that she's going to love this card. Well, I hope she does anyway, but I think she will. OK, so that's all our panels set on the front. And now I'm going to add these four strips on the back. Like I said, you don't have to do this. But you can decorate the back any way you like. I kind of feel that the back of the card won't be seen the way it's going to be set on a mantle. But um, I just liked the idea of pulling some of the imagery from the front of the card to the back of the card. And like I said, this would be a great space to write a message or a note or have a couple of people write messages on the back of the card. Lovely. So that's that done. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of my peel offs and I love the love from Lizzie peel offs. These give the imagery of um, mats and layers to a card, but they can also be used to embellish the card. And I found this blue set that I have here matches the light blue in the pattern paper really well. So I'm going to add these onto the front of my card, but you could just take whatever color mat that you're putting on your card. I have the dark blue here. I could have cut a load of one sixteenth with strips of the navy card and put that along the bottom and that would give the same kind of image as my peel offs. But these peel offs, although they're that very pale powder blue, they have this silver edge along each side. And I just, I love the look of them. So I thought I would embellish the card using them. And I'll put a link to the peel offs in the description box down below in case you're interested in having a look. Now, excuse my head popping in and out there. I just wanted to make sure that I got these straight. These peel offs also, they have um, a sticky on them, so they stick down and they stay really well. I've never had a problem with my peel offs coming off when they shouldn't. So on the bottom, I've put two layer, two rows and on the top, I'm just going to put one. But I really like the look of this. I think it just finishes the card, gives it that little je ne sais quoi. I hope that's the right word to use there. Anyway, there we go. That's our card. I'm going to add a little bit of 
Wheat of Stella to the uh, front of my card. And I'm going to take some Nouveau Drops. Now the Nouveau Drops that I have used are the, uh, one is the Jewel Drops and that's the Steel Blue. And then the other ones, these are the Nouveau Crystal Drops and they're in Blue Babe. Fabulous colours, Blue Babe and Steel Blue. And I just thought these two would work really nicely with the colours that's in our card. I always like to give them a little shake. I store my Nouveau Drops um, with the lid down. I use a nail varnish holder or rack to store my Nouveau Drops. And when I go to use them, I give them a little shake and then I put a little drop down on a piece of cardstock just to make sure that they're flowing nicely. And I never have problems with Nouveau Drops, I have to say. I have gotten some other um, drops that are like Nouveau Drops from other suppliers. And I don't know, I think the Nouveau Drops each time, they work perfectly and they give a fabulous look. So they'd be my preference. So that's the Nouveau Drops that I've used. And that is our first card using the Papercraft Society Box 17 by Olga. I hope you like this card. Okay, let's move on to card number two. This card was inspired from the little card that came in the box. And I keep all my cards together on this little ring. And then I just hang it off my little cart. So I thought because there's four card inspirations on here, we would take one. And I'm going to do the fourth one. I'm using a five by seven white card base that I have in my stash. I have a pink matte layer and this measures four and three quarters by six and three quarters. And the floral is four and five eighths by six and five eighths. I've got this green matte and it's six and a quarter by two and an eighth. And the floral is two by six and one eighth. This blue mat measures one and three eighths by four and three quarters. And my floral measures one and a quarter by four and three quarters. I've cut out a square of gray pattern paper and it's a three by three square and a white panel measuring two and a half by two and a half. And I've stamped using one of the stamps in the stash, this tea set um, image as well as a sentiment and that's there's always time for tea and cake i've put some foam tape behind that to give a little bit of dimension on our card and i'll use some of the string that came in the kit as well okay i've got my um art glitter glue and i'm going to use that to stick everything down and I have to say the string that came in the kit, it's a kind of a fine silvery string. It's lovely, but I struggled to tie a bow with this. And I don't usually struggle with tying a bow in ribbon or anything like that. But this string, it felt kind of slippy in my fingers. Um, but I love the look and the sparkle on it that you get for a finish. So I'm putting down my mats and my patterned paper and I'm doing it the way it shows us on our little card. I like the pattern papers in this um, box. I think their color palette is just lovely. The pinks, greens and uh, the greys. But I have to say my favorites are the blue. It reminds me of the English Wedgwood. Okay, next I'm going to put our strip that goes from side to side. And before I stick this down, I'll add my string to this panel. And what I've done is I've wrapped it around three times and I'm going to tie the bow to that then. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit out <laughs> all the faffing around that I did. I didn't think you'd want to see all that. And then I'm going to just glue it down. Now you could use foam tape behind this if you wanted, then straddle our square panel on top of that and just add foam to the top and bottom of the panel. But I liked the idea of just sticking this down 
and then adding our um, panel with our sentiment on top of that. Lovely. I love this. This is a nice, quick card to make and it could be for anything, you know. Um, I haven't put any sentiment inside this card. This could be a birthday card or thinking of you or missing you card or happy Mother's Day card, whatever you like. But I just think this card without putting a sentiment in is a great one to have in the stash. Now, the little um, sequins or beads that come in the kit, they have um, a sticky back on them. But sometimes they did the sticky back was left behind on the release paper there. And that's why you see me using the liquid glue. They're tiny and using the tweezers to try to get them off. They were pinging across the craft room. So I just used my fingers for a finish. Lovely. So now I have an extra strip of this blue patterned paper that I'm going to put inside at the bottom. And I think that just finishes the card. So there we go. That's our card inspired by the little card that came in the box. I hope you like it. OK, let's move on to our final card, card number three. My card base measures six by 12 and I've scored it at six for this card. And this can be um, a top folding card or a side folding card. And for me, I'm going to make it a side folding card because I've always this thing in my head of a top folding card and the whole thing just sliding open. So I think there's less chance of that happening with a side folding card. So that's what I'm going with here. Perfect. OK, on top of that, we're going to put another panel in the same color and this piece measures six by six and a half. And I've scored it at a half and at six and we will fold and burnish those, but not right now because this piece is going to go through our die cutting machine. I'm going to put an opening or an aperture in front of that. So I've die cut out a frame using my two dies and the largest one here die cuts um, at four and a half inches or the diameter is four and a half and the smaller one the diameter is four inches so I've die cut out a frame and then I'm going to die cut out using the smaller die I'm going to die cut out our opening so you can just visualize there an opening in the front now I've done this before and I've used an oval die which I think is great. I went with the circle dies this time round, and I love the look of this. I think it's a great, it's a very tactile card because you're peeking through. But I have to say my preference again would be to use an oval die rather than the circle dies, but it does look great. And the images in the video doesn't do the card justice really. So now I need to die cut out my opening using the smaller die, but I want to make sure I leave enough room at the top and the sides for my frame and I want to make sure that I get it even. So I'm just checking to make sure would I be happy with it there. And there's no going back once I die cut this out. So I want to make sure I'm happy with where it is. Now, the tape that's on my die there from die cutting out the frame, I'm going to take that tape off and I'm going to have it so that it sticks to the inside of my circle. That way, when I peel it off, if it does damage the cardstock, it'll damage this piece that we're going to cut out rather than my piece that's going to go on my card base. So I'm going to carefully take that off on both sides. And then once I have that off, I'll stick my die down. And I'm kind of happy with where that's looking there. I feel that's going to be the best. It's a little higher because I want to leave room at the bottom for a sentiment that I'm going to put down there. So let's put that through our die cutting machine. OK, and here we go. There's our circle die cut out. And that's our frame. It's going to sit on top. Brilliant. Now I'm going to take my glue and I'm going to stick my frame down. And the reason I'm doing that now is because it will allow me time for the frame to, um, to dry or to set. 
on our cardstock. And that way then when we go to curve this into our dome shape, um, the frame will be nicely adhered. We can now fold and burnish our score lines on either side of our aperture. And I'm just doing that by hand. But once I've that done, then I will later on um, burnish that with my bone folder. But that's how it's going to sit on the front of our card. Lovely. OK, so now we need to work on what we're going to see through the aperture. I have taken a an embossing folder and it's an elegant room embossing folder and I have embossed this image out and I'm going to sit my dresser on top and then we'll see through our opening or our aperture our lovely dresser inside. It's like looking through a window into a room. And of course, you could always use a window die here rather than a circle die if you have one in your stash. And it would be like peeking through the window of a house. Lovely. OK, so the um, the way I have done my background piece is I've taken my embossing folder. Oh, hang on. Let's talk about our dresser first. I'm showing you the dies that I used. I've only put one layer behind the um, doors and the drawer this time, but I'm happy with that. OK, now let's talk about our embossing folder. So this is the Elegance Rooms embossing folder and it's a paper discovery embossing folder. You can see that what I've done is I've cut out the image at the top and it's allowed me to then replace it with my green patterned paper. So my panel measures five and three quarters by five and three quarters for a finish. And I'll be able to then just stick that down onto the card base and put our dome piece over the top. Lovely. I'm going to stick that down now to the front of our card and we have a lovely border the whole way around. Now the sides of this panel is going to be hidden behind the dome front, but I wanted the imagery of the flooring and the panels at the back. Now I have all my little pieces die cut out to go in our dresser. And although I have a white panel in the background of the dresser, I've also put some white delf or tea set in there as well. And you can see the difference between the background and the delf that's going to sit in there. So I'm just faffing around deciding where I want all my little pieces to go. And once I have that done, then I'm going to take my liquid glue and stick everything down. And I love the little carriage clock that comes in these sets. The tea set or um, plates and the delf that comes are, are fabulous. And you can embellish them using the stamps. And there's a couple of different stamps images for it to put on those. But I just I love the little carriage clock. My mom has one like that. And it just makes me think of home. Um, yeah, it makes me smile when I look at it. OK, so that's the plate going up there or the um, platter, I think that's called that big plate platter. Am I right? Um, yeah, but I'm going to put that at the top shelf on the back and then a couple of mugs in front of it. So I got great pleasure using this kit. I'm not joking, guys, if you can hear the smile in my voice. I just really enjoyed making up these little dressers. I was smiling away here in my craft room, which I've recently upgraded. I have some new shelving behind me. Did you notice that in the little opening video where I show you the box? Yeah, I got some my hubby for Valentine's Day. He didn't get me chocolate. No, he didn't get me a, um, a card. No, he didn't get me alcohol. No. He got me three shelving units from Ikea and I was chuffed. I was so chuffed. OK, so moving on now to the dome part of our card. So I'm using my red liner tape and this red liner tape is a half an inch in width. So it goes nicely there on those two side pieces. Once I've that pressed down really well, I'm going to take the release paper off the front. And then we'll stick that down to the front of our card. Now, in hindsight, I'm going to stamp on these side pieces. 
I would recommend you do it before you stick these down. Do as I say, not as I do. Yeah, I'm going to show you once I have this down, we're going to put the inside panel in. And I love the little stamped border that I used and I'm going to pick that up on the front. So this mum and the amazing friend stamps I had in my stash and I just liked the look of these. I think this card will make a lovely Mother's Day card. Um, so yeah, I'm going to stick these two down with the mum one that I used white embossing powder on the same cardstock that I've made the card base from. I just felt it was missing something and I wanted to pick up the colour that I've used on the stamped image of Amazing Friend. So I've used one of the green inks from Paper Craft Society. I just um, smeared that down onto some white cardstock. I allowed it to dry for about 30 seconds and then I'm going to stick down my mum sentiment that I fussy cut out. Once that's down and dry, I'm going to now fussy cut around that. So it looks like my white embossed mum sentiment has got um, two shadow images behind it. One in our card base color and one in the green color. And the green color I've used also on the inside of our card for our panel. And like I said, I'll show you that in a minute. So I'm sorry, I kind of go a little off screen there. I'm just closely watching what I'm doing, fussy cutting. I have an overhead light that um, can move up and down. And when the top of that has got a magnifying glass on it that you can look down through. And usually I use that when I'm fussy cutting, but because I had the overhead light on for it, I am um, just free free eyeballed it but I'm not very good at eyeballing it when I'm fussy cutting okay so I've put um, two layers of foam tape under the M part of the mum and that's just to raise it up because it's going on to a curved um, area lovely I'm delighted with that now okay so here's our panel for inside and it measures for five and three quarters by five and three quarters. I've put a strip of the patterned paper that's on our wall on the inside of this. I've also used one of the stamps, this long, it looks like an X, X's, a line of X's, as well as I've stamped some of the plates and cups and the jug. So I love the look of it. I'm delighted with that, but I just feel something's missing there along the sides. And this is when I decide to take that stamp and stamp that down on either side. But I've given you the heads up now. You should have done that before you, you've got to this point in the card. I'm just going to move my stamp over to the edge of my stamping block and I'm going to freehand stamp this. And that's the thing about the stamps in this collection and in these Paper Craft Society boxes, they stamp beautifully i don't think they're photopolymer but whatever they're made of they give a beautiful impression and i'm really pleased i can't say i've had a bad stamping with them since i've started getting the boxes so i've done one side i'm just going to finish off the other side cover up my ink and then look at that isn't that lovely I'm so delighted with these three cards. I hope you have enjoyed my video and I hope you enjoyed watching me make these three cards and maybe you might consider making them yourself. So that's it. That's our video using the Paper Craft Society box number 17 by Olga. If you've enjoyed my video, you might click on the like button down below and give my video a thumbs up. If you're a subscriber, thanks for subscribing. And if not, you might click on the bell icon. That way you'll be notified whenever I post a new video and you won't be charged for it. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. And until next time, thanks for watching and bye for now.